Hi, I'm Jared Bell and you're watching the Johnson City Press Week in Review right here on johnsoncitypress.com. Our nation was rocked yet again this week with news of another mass shooting, this time at the Route 91 Harvest Music Festival in Las Vegas. At least 58 people died, over 500 were injured. It was the deadliest mass shooting in modern U.S. history as Stephen Craig Paddock, a 64-year-old retiree from Mesquite, Nevada, fired round after round after round at a crowd of thousands who simply wanted to enjoy an evening of country music. As Jason Aldean sang, the gunman smashed out the windows of his 32nd floor hotel room at Mandalay Bay and showered the crowd with bullets. The dead included at least three off-duty police officers from various departments who were attending the concert, and two on-duty officers were wounded, one critically. Some of the injured were hit by shrapnel, others were trampled in the mass panic. Our hearts go out to all who have been affected by this senseless act. There have been multiple updates to the story as more information is released and the internet has taken every possible narrative, whether believable, hurtful, or disgusting, and run with it. If you'd like to keep up with the facts as they are released by law enforcement and more details are being released every day, please follow the coverage in the Johnson City Press or here on our website. 43-year-old Scott Edmiston was arrested Monday after Washington County deputies pulled him over for a traffic stop and found loaded guns including two homemade machine guns and over 900 rounds of ammunition in his car. It seems Edmiston was already under investigation after sending harsh letters to at least three judges in Washington County, a prosecutor confirmed Tuesday. District Attorney General Tony Clark would not give details about the contents of the letters, but Edmiston reportedly was upset over a child custody issue. Although Clark would not confirm that information, Edmiston's Facebook profile had multiple references to Child Protective Services taking children away. Edmiston was stopped for speeding, which led to the search of his vehicle. Local, state, and federal authorities also searched Edmiston's home Tuesday and found four more rifles, one which had been converted to be fully automatic, and another large cache of ammunition. For more details on the story, read Becky Campbell's article on our website. Officials with the Johnson City Police Department said that a bank robbery that occurred Wednesday afternoon has now been turned over to the FBI. Police confirmed Wednesday that someone robbed the Tri-City Community Bank on Boone's Creek Road, but did not give any more details of the robbery. Emergency radio communications said the robber was wearing a gorilla mask and that officers were on the lookout for a golden Honda Accord that fled the scene in the eastbound lane of Interstate 26 towards Irwin. And speaking of Irwin, this is a big weekend for people in Irwin and in Jonesboro as the Apple Festival and the Storytelling Festival both look to kick off this weekend to huge crowds and beautiful weather. This is the 45th year for the Storytelling Festival, which has come to signal fall for those in Tennessee's oldest town. Dozens of tellers, thousands of visitors, and a plethora of things to do will highlight the weekend for those looking to experience some of the magic in j -Bo. The Apple Festival is turning 40 this year and organizers have promised a great weekend of fun and entertainment, vendors galore, and a vast array of locally grown heirloom and popular apple varieties. To find out more about schedules and events, visit our website. So if you're getting out this weekend to either one of those festivals, have fun, or whatever you're doing, have fun, but stay safe. The events of this past week should remind us that whatever we do, Please be kind and respect one another. I'm Jared Bentley. This has been the Johnson City Press Week in Review right here on johnsoncitypress.com. Thanks for watching.